It is eight minutes to eight. So Jude Bellingham has been one of the standout stars of the World mm. Cup, our teenage midfield sensation. Scored the opening goal for England against Iran, of course. One man the young footballer credits for his success is his former coach, Mike Dodds, who's been supporting the star since he was a little out of seven years old. And, of course, today as well throughout the tournament. Now, he's the, here is the emotional moment the young footballer was shown a clip of his mentor. If there's one thing you always said to him before a game that you'd say right now, what would it be? I'm going to be the best player. Wow. Makes me feel a bit emotional, actually, but I'll try my best. And he is Aww. every single step he takes. Mike Dodds joins us now. Good morning, Mike. Morning. Great to have you with us this morning. Uh, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you just how well Jude is playing and, and what an achievement, what a young man he is becoming. From our perspective as England fans, though, to watch this team play and play with such team spirit is really exciting. And to have someone like him at such a young age feeling like he's got the world at his feet, he really could be world, a, a global star in a few years' time is so exciting. Do you get nervous watching him because you've known him for such a long time? Uh, I'll, I'll be completely honest, yeah, I do. Um, you know, watching England used to be something I really enjoyed. It's now turned into something that creates a little <laughs> bit of anxiety for me just because, um, just because, as I said, I've known him for so long and, you know, I I'm just desperate for him to, to, to do well. You know, thank God up to this point, he's, he's done OK, to be fair to him. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's... Um, it's turned into um, a little bit more anxiety watching England that I would that I would normally hope for. It sounds like you feel as a parent when you watch your kids do something. You you sort of willing them on so much <laughs> and worrying about the heartbreak. So what was he like at seven years old then? Um, yeah, you know I get asked that question a lot. He was he was just I say a normal seven year old. He he was obviously a talented boy because he wouldn't have got signed for Birmingham City's academy if. If he wasn't a talented boy, but he he just loved football. He had a big smile on his face, um, ran around, really enjoyed his football. I think I described in one interview as a little bit like Tigger in terms of um, just wanted to play football. You know, he just he just wanted to kind of be given a football and and let him run around. So, you know, I, I would never have predicted at that age that he'd go on and do what he's doing right now. Um, but he was he was he was definitely a talented boy. Yeah, I'm not going to play that down. I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? So when you see youngsters at that age, full of beans, excited, with talent, and you wouldn't necessarily have predicted him as being the one out of all the ones you saw that would have gone on to where he is now, uh, what do you think the difference is then? Is it how he applied himself? Is it that his enthusiasm sustained? Is it just the coaching? Could be part of your work, you know? What, what, what do you think makes the difference? Because I'm sure there's... <laughs> There's millions of youngsters that would love mm. to know. I've got a real opportunity to plug myself here, haven't yeah. I? Yes, um, you have. No, he... Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he, he, was, he, was, look, he was very different in terms of... Um, he wanted to be the best at everything he turned his hand to, whether that would be on the training pitch, whether that would be in the gym, whether that would be analysis work. Um, he was very, very focused in terms of what he wanted to achieve. But I wouldn't say that became really serious for him until he probably got into the middle of his teens, kind of like 12, 13, 14, is when he kind of he kind of went, right, I actually really want to do this. I actually really want to be a professional footballer. Up to that point, he was just you know, a kind of normal kid that just loved playing football. I think the one thing that sets him apart from, from boys that I've, I've worked with in the past um, is probably just that attitude, that desire to be the very, very best. I mean, he went to the European Championships at 17, um, which, you know, I, I text him saying, look, you know, just make sure you enjoy the experience. You know, he his reply was, you know, he wants to play every minute of every game, but that's just his mindset. He's gone to the World Cup and his, his mindset going into the World Cup won't be, you know, can I play in a team? His mindset would be, I want to win the tournament. I want yeah. to be the best player. And I think that's the probably the thing that sets him apart from, from most, you know, young men, boys that I've coached in the past. I, he, we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, Susanna was talking about this with me. He was seven years old when Qatar won 
this World Cup. He was only seven years old, and here he is. Won on, the chance on to the host world, it, Yeah, won the chance clear. to host yeah. it, yeah. On the world stage, I wonder, Mike, with someone who's been with him every step of the way or from the age of seven, we saw his goal a little bit earlier on. How did you feel when, he, when you saw him put that... I mean, it was what a beautifully taken header as well, by the way. But how did you feel when he got that goal? Uh, well, you've just made me feel really old, so I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, look, I was really, really proud. I was, I, I, um, I'm currently working for a different football team at the moment. We were out in Dubai um, uh, for some warm weather training and we were sat in um, like a, a local bar and with some of the staff. Um, so it was a real surreal experience. The staff were really good with me. Obviously, they, you know, the staff were really proud for me. Um, you know, I'm the type of character, I try, I try not to get too far ahead of myself and, you know, Jude would be the first person to, to probably tell you I always try and keep Jude's feet on his ground, Jude's feet on the floor. Um, so I don't try not to get too far ahead of myself, but, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't really proud, you know. I've known him for well over a decade. We've had some real ups and downs in our relationship. And then to sit, you know, probably the other side of the world having a drink and seeing a boy that you, you've got a real close relationship score at the World Cup was was probably one of the most surreal experiences of my life. I bet. So if you could offer some, uh, you know, advice to the other side of the world again, uh, to the in whole England team, not just your boy, uh, as they take on France tomorrow, what would be your coaching advice? Oh, putting me on the spot there. I am. Um, this is your chance as, to be England manager, Mike. Yeah, yeah, come on, this is an audition. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm clearly, not, I'm clearly not as I'm clearly not as versed as Gareth. Um, look, I'm sure they've done all the preparation. Um, if you look at the last World Cup, we got to the semi-finals, we got to the final in the Euros. So, you know, the work that the the staff are doing behind the scenes is is clearly first class because we are getting to that stage of the tournament. It would be keep doing what you're doing. Um, I wouldn't want to put too much pressure on them because, you know, they will understand the magnitude of the game, so they, they won't need any additional pressure. I would make sure that it's nice and relaxed. I would make sure they're really, really prepared, which the staff have, have clearly done in, in, in all the games. And, I, you know, I know it sounds very simplistic. I, I would be, just be kind of telling them, go and do what you've done. You know, go and, in, go and enjoy the game um, and keep doing what you've been doing. Oof. The big difference about those other tournaments, of course, is Jude is starting which makes a massive difference, I think. It's very exciting <laughs> seeing him grow and let's what hope he continues to flourish and become the player that he could certainly become. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for your time and sharing a few thoughts. Uh, we will be, I'm sure, alongside you, cheering England on tomorrow when they face France in the World Cup quarterfinals. You can see <sighs> it on ITV1. Coverage starts at 6pm.